Creator Harold Young has been called many things, but by far the most impressive credentials he carries are his ability to solve crimes. Mr. Young is with me this evening. Harold, welcome to the program. Thank you for having me. We had, did a program about a year and three months ago, shortly after the Stephen Benson murder trial concluded, and uh, we talked at that point in time. We talked a great deal about your involvement with that, with that particular case, and uh, as we do our program tonight, we're going to find that that case may eventually have cost you your job and uh, put you this evening to some of the circumstances involved and in why you're running for the sheriff's office. What I'd like to do this evening is uh, take uh, do a two-part program if we could. First thing is that when I did a little research for our show tonight, I talked to many of the trial attorneys in the county and some of the stories that I've heard about your ability to ply and get witnesses and to find out the facts are, are really, really amazing. And what I'd like to do this evening is because many people here in Collier County are familiar with the cases that, that you've had something to do with, is just if we could briefly sort of go through a chronological order of some of the many things that you've done and been involved in in Collier County. It's a, if you take the criminal beat, your name and the criminal beat are synonymous. In my introduction, I said that you are familiar with the crooks and the lawyers. I didn't mean that you have them with the crooks, but uh, you've got the, the meaning. But you started your career in law enforcement in Ohio. Why don't you tell us what brought you to Southwest Florida? Well, I had, uh, my father-in-law had moved in to uh, Florida, so I had moved down here with him, or came down with him and stayed, and, uh, and sought out law enforcement career here, and stayed here since 72. You started in the Cuyahoga County Sheriff's Department? No, I started with the Department of Corrections, because uh, the hiring at that time was not like it is now, so I had to wait my turn to get on. One of the first cases that I've heard a great deal about was this case involving a man named Bill Christopher. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that? That name may be familiar to many in our audience. I wasn't here then and I'm not as familiar. I believe that case was in 1977 where Bill Christopher had murdered uh, his daughter's uh, adopted parents down in the Glades on Terrell Road. Uh, Glades condominiums. Yes. That, that incident occurred. Uh, in August, I believe, of that year, like on the 1st of August, and the bodies were found like on the 13th. What was the circumstances? Why did he kill his adopted, his daughter's adopted parents? There seems to be, that's a strange well, combination. he had, uh, the daughter was conceived uh, 15 years earlier. She was a 15-year-old girl, and her mother gave her up for adoption to these people, Bertha Skillings. And uh, they had raised her when in a, a few years Prior to the murders, uh, she had the mother, the real mother lived in Memphis, Tennessee, and had come back and taken her to Memphis a couple of summers. And during one of those visits, uh, she introduced him, her, to the her father, original father, Bill Christopher. And from that introduction, uh, they became uh, acquainted and visited a lot and then became lovers. The father became the, the adult lover of his 15 year old daughter. And that's true. Wonderful family. All right. And, uh, she came back to Naples and he followed her and uh, stayed with the uh, family Ahern and Skilling for a while. And then the, there was plans to for him to take her back to Memphis with him. And the mother, adopted mother, discovered the plans and and started to stop Christopher and he killed her. He shot this his 15-year-old daughter's adopted mother. Right, yeah, shot her in the head and drug her and placed her in a bathroom. And when the husband came home, Ahern, he forced him to go to the bank and withdraw like $300 and brought him back home and shot him and, and left the town with the daughter. How did you get into the case? Tell me your involvement. Well, the, the bodies were discovered, of course, and they called us when we did an investigation. And during the time I, that we were at the house, a telephone rang, and it was the adopted mother on the phone inquiring uh, what was going on. So you're doing an investigation at the murder scene and you get a phone call while you're there. That's right, yeah. <laughs> Tell and us about it. It was uh, the adopted mother saying, uh, where's Bertha, where's uh, Norma? Norma Sands was the daughter. And uh, my aunt was just uh, play, being very coy with her, not telling her anything. And, and finally we told them, and she uh, told them, well, you should look for Bill Christopher because he's uh, no good. And, and he's been down there. So that's how we got onto his trail. How did you trace him? Well, she was calling from Memphis. She was calling from Memphis, Memphis and Memphis. she had heard that Christopher was up there. And uh, we proceeded to Memphis, I think, that next night, myself and Captain Mills, who's in the church department. And we spent like 13 days pursuing uh, Christopher in and around Memphis. Uh, and how does that work when you go out of town? You've got a hot lead. You have the, the mother of the, of the daughter now at this point in time. Is called while you're at the murder scene. 
and you want to find this man, how does it work when you go to a strange town? Have you ever been to Memphis before? Do you didn't have a report those police officers? My first time, but it was a good experience because we immediately went to the, I think we had made contact by telephone with the local FBI for some reason. They were looking for Christopher, for, uh, so we thought they might have information. They did some uh, facts behind him. But we made contact with the homicide unit in Memphis, Tennessee, and we met with a Chester Boswell, who was a sergeant in charge of the homicide unit that we, we worked with, and they were very helpful, and they gave us all the manpower we needed to track him down, along with the SWAT team, and so they were very helpful. But I must mention, since that time, Chester Boswell has passed away, so they, but we became very close to over the past years uh, with the Memphis Police Department. And those people, they still call us and come down and visit. When you've got a case like that and you're out of town and you, you, you found him, how did you get to, did he confess? Yes. He did confess? Yes, he confessed in the Memphis Homicide Unit uh, Office of the Captain. There. To you? To myself and Curtis Mills and the Captain, yes. Interesting case. Now, there was some problem. His daughter, who had become his lover, uh, protected him. Up to, a, up to a point. Uh, she did not want to believe, and she was in love with this guy as a lover, and I don't know whether she had any father, I mean, she cared for him as a father, but, but she was very protective of him. Uh, he had told her sometime during the 13-day ordeal that they had killed himself you know, because she had noticed blood on his shoes or something. And, uh, but it was hard in convincing her that they were actually dead. And the way we did that, actually did it. She did not realize the fact that their mother was dead. But we had to actually show her some pictures. And then from that point on, she was uh, very aggressive toward the conviction. And then turned her around. And, then and uh, during the trial, he tried to claim that she did it. She did the killing. He said that she did it. The 15-year-old girl did it. Where's he now? He's on death row. He's on death row in the state of Florida. Yes. In 19...